They say real estate is the purest form of entrepreneurship. And analysts have said that if properly unnest can contribute significantly to the economic growth. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Women's Series where we capture developments and stirrings that impact women. My name is Ayamide Ogutoye. So you recall that in the first two weeks of April, we talked about real estate and was of course the fundamentals of real estate. But today we want to talk about the prospects, which of course is leading to the conference we are expecting to see on the 30th and the 31st of May. Um, I have a guest with me to speak with me on that. I'm super excited to be speaking with this person because this is my first time meeting her. She is the founder and the CEO of 3Invest, a person of Ruth Obi, and also the convener of the Real Estate Unite Conference. Hello, Ruth. How are you? Hi, I'm How are you? You seem so relaxed. Well, I am. I'm trying to be. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Are you sure you're fine? Of course I am. Thank <laughs> you, you look so much. fine, by the way. I look fine. And how's it's the all in the head. It's I all know, in the right? Mind. Yeah. Well, how's the process of um, preparing for the conference? How's it been? Uh, well, it's just 10 years of doing this. Mm -hmm. So um, I wouldn't say it's easier. It's always hectic because there's a lot of thoughts that and strategy and planning that goes through it. So, but we're almost there. Right, we're counting days now. <laughs> That's good. Um, so um, two weeks, in first first two weeks of April, we spoke about some real estate and um, we established the fact that it is a good form of investment for women and um, it helps mm -hmm. to um, create wealth for them. Mm -hmm. Now, but um, let's bring it home to the economy at large now. How would you describe the role of the real estate sector in Nigeria in achieving economic growth? I mean, I was at the conference or a business summit some time ago, and uh, we discovered or analysts, financial analysts that said specifically that if properly unnest, um, we can't be looking at other places to unnest economic growth. And of course, one major problem uh, aspects that they mentioned was the real estate value chain. So in your opinion, how would you describe the role of the real estate sector in achieving the national economic growth? Uh, well, um, I kind of think that I look at it from the opportunity and the issues mm. because um, globally, obviously, real estate contributes to the economic growth of any nation, yep. if properly harnessed, like you said. Mm. Um, so the, that's, the, that's the opportunity that is just there. Mm -hmm. So how the, the problem is, how do you now start to you know, get into how the real estate can help the economy grow? Then you now look at the issues on one hand and you go like, there are so many issues that I think in the past 10 years we've, been, we've used Real Estate Unite as a sort of gap filler to find out how we can get find solutions to those issues that are there. They are there, they're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we just have to know how to address them and try to like sort of shorten them as we go. Because the more issues there and you think you're doing something about it, the wider it's getting. So I think the major issue that, you know, the sort of, um, um, would I say, inhabiting the growth mm -hmm. of um, this sector is legislation. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when we call, talk about policy, most of the things you, you have so many ideas of what you want to do uh, from private sector. But if from the legislative part, so from the government part, these policies are not passed and they're not allowing you to do, or there are no specific um, laws or regulations that can help you achieve what you want to achieve, you can't do anything about mm -hmm. it. I mean, right. that means you're breaking the law. So I think um, when you look at it, if I, I just want to round it up as, if the legislation, legislative part of um, the country or the nation can look into the policies, the real estate policies that can grow the sector, we talk about laws, estate laws, regulations, construction. There are laws, but how active or how are people using these laws you know, to favor the economy and also the people? So I kind of think that um, the opportunity is there, which is the great opportunity that real estate is there, yes. So if there's an opportunity, why don't we try and see how we can find solutions to tap into that? Right. I feel like you've like jumped like one, two, three, mm -hmm. and it feels like we're there already. We've got into the policy part. But I love the fact that um, we established that there is a clause, if properly unnest, mm -hmm. and that's where the clause is. And you've identified that there are challenges as well, which of course are the issues. And you've mentioned that one major issue that um, the sector is um, experiencing 
is in terms of policy making by the legislative. Mm. Now, apart from that, do we have other challenges that the sector is going through? So, um, so I look at it, you look at economic development, okay, from one angle, and, I, and from the angle that we come in as real estate advocate, we're also looking at sustainable development. Mm. Because when you talk about sustainability, it's just like everything is right on the right, mm. okay? So you're looking at, okay, real estate is actually when it comes to contributing to um, the greater use of carbon emission when it comes to climate change and all the issues relating to sustainability. Mm. Real estate has a greater role also to play. Mm. No matter how the opportunities are, the issues are, are there. also there, under there. So if we're looking at economy and we're looking at sustainable, sustainable development, we should not be able to see, look at what is it that real estate can do to reduce this pressure, okay. to reduce these issues, mm -hmm. okay? So when you're looking at and you have a goal to, you know, tap to work on the economic development of the nation, you should also look at how real estate can also work on the sustainable development of, of, of the world mm -hmm. when you look at it globally. Mm -hmm. So I think um, what we've done in the past 10 years is we've actually focused on economic development. What are those gaps that are there that we can find solutions you know, through all what we do through advocacy? Now, we're not looking at the sustainable development part of it because of when we talk about sustainability, yeah. it's what, that, what would help you go into the future. Yeah. Okay, so it, it goes beyond every other thing that we're trying to do. So I believe that the sustainability also has um, a touch of the structural a touch of policies in the sector itself, right? I mean, you, you, you're you talking about, um, sustainability is, is, is huge if you're looking at it from yeah. that from angle. That angle. Um, but most importantly is we're looking for how the sector can now be more sustainable. That means from the regular, the normal things that we're doing, you're looking to see how you can now take decisions. This is where ESG comes in take decisions that will reduce the pressure in terms of energy, water consumption, um, the kind of- Because it's quite large. Yes, it's large. Yeah. You know, the way uh, um, there, there's something called embodied energy, yeah. all the things that you do to get real estate in place. Mm. So if you look at how you can now work, be, you know, like look at the re regulations when it comes to sustainability to say, okay, fine. How do we work on this to make sure that at the end of the day, we are now working for a sustainable development culture, mm. a sustainable development future when it comes to that. So, right. Yeah. So in order to achieve all of these things, of course, there are certain policies that has to be in place. Mm -hmm. And in, um, in actual facts, or let's just in plain terms, could you speak to the policies you'd like to see? I mean, in terms of scaling the yeah, growth in the sector i mean mm -hmm. what are the policies you want to say i mean if you were given an opportunity to write down these policies and say okay present it to the legislative as as we said what are the key policies you'd like to see okay so we can't deny the fact that there are obviously um, existing policies, policies yeah. okay and there has been also policies that they've tried to put in place to work you know going from the finance bill that was you know that would help the SME and the REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust, to well, there's been also a national yeah, infrastructure right, bond. Mm -hmm. There's been a, an, a, a, an infra infrastructure bond that's been put in place mm -hmm. recently from the Minister of Housing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's been also um, recapitalization of the mortgage um, sector through NMRC. Those are the little, little things that you can see that the government is actually you working know try, on. working on. I mean, there, there's efforts that is being put in place. Then you now also see how they are using um, the FH, uh, FHF, the family home funds, to also reduce um, deficit in housing where public and private sector are also partnering in building more affordable homes in different rural areas. But I kind of think that um, um, the, 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 the issues that, I kind of, that, that we need to look at is data related. Now, there are no empirical data that you can say that um, how how did you source this data that you can use to make informed decisions? For example, when you are comparing a place like Africa, Nigeria, with a place like Europe, maybe UK, mm -hmm. you know, you can't really compare because you can be able to hold to say this is where this data was gotten right. from. So we say we have um, housing deficits since two thousand and one of seventeen million. Where is that data? How do we actually 
get the facts. So, because I mean, the person that read that since that since 2000 and whatever that they did that, that's a whole lot of gap for you to see. Then you now look at uh, other policies that I kind of think that is in place. There's a real estate law that has been it's just been passed, right? The regulatory law. I hope that when that starts to come into place, that things should be able to change. But I think a sector that needs to be a little bit more regulated is the construction sector. Okay. There, there isn't much of regulation when it comes to, so when you see all the building collapses and all that, you can see there's, there's no law that you say that guides people on how to build or what not to build. In terms of, of construction. In terms right. of construction. And so when it comes to design, you design as a design, uh, as an architect and passes on and they decide to just do whatever they want to do at the end. So I kind of think that if we look at the, like the value chain, then we should be able to look at how we can build policies that can the help them. The so when it comes, I don't even want to talk about finance mortgage. <laughs> we have, you know, clearly uh, a, 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 a failed mortgage system, system or we have a failed um, debt equity system. I mean, the, the, the cost of borrowing money to, to buy a home, to the cost of borrowing money to build a, a home, construction, Everything is I think I raised an issue on mm -hmm. that one, especially for mortgage. Yeah. I think I raised an issue about that mm -hmm. as well. So that's that's basically, these are the things we need to do. So when you talk about when it comes to um, mortgages or finance, those are also things that are guided by law. Then, you know, there's certain things you can't do because maybe foreclosure law does not allow you to do this. No more that could not happen. A whole lot of things that we just have to sit down and practically, that, and that's why the invest has invested so much in advocacy because we sort of keep looking at the issues. What are these issues? How do we fill the gaps? That has always been the goal for our advocacy platform. How so let me quickly touch you on one, on the mortgage. Mm -hmm. The last person I spoke to about that said that as opposed to the government taking up the mortgage plans and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, and then leaving out even mortgage banks and the likes, how about private sectors taking out, taking on this as a responsibility to build? I mean, if we're not seeing the impacts of the government doing anything about mortgage plans and giving like um, deals for public and private sector workers to make it easy for them in terms of housing. So what are your thoughts on that in terms so there, of there, real estate, the private sector? Taking okay, so up? there's limits to what you can do as private, private sector, sector, like well. I said. And if you allow... Uh, I mean, if you allow people to run with it, you are going to have a case of where right, there's lawlessness. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of regulations. You can't just get up to, as a private sector, without understanding funding and begin to fund. You can't. And then halfway if, through. Yeah, even if, you, even if you're able to do that, you have to get SEC approval mm -hmm. to be able to do it from either crowdfunding perspective. So the only much you can do from the private sector is to create a, a, a payment structure, a payment scheme, a repayment period. Or even if you are funded by, you know, you can say, okay, we're selling the house because we know it's been funded. Maybe we want to talk about prop tech and the rest of that. But aside from that, there's, there's a limit to what the private sector can do when it comes to funding, mm. you know, without approval. I mean, come on. <laughs> that means <laughs> right. you're going to have encourage a lot of fraud that you can't even yeah, control. True, so there has right. to be that, that approval and right. those, um, those checks has to be in there. Right, in I agree. So there's one very interesting part of the Real Estate Unite conference that um, we saw. That's the AWI. AY, uh, AY, African women yeah, in real African estate. Women in real estate. Mm -hmm. I mean, the involvement of that. How is this improving women inclusion in the industry? Um, well, like I said, uh, when I started um, AY in 2014, mm -hmm. I think AY was bettered with some personal challenges that I had faced okay. being in the industry right. as a woman. Um, um, when my focus went beyond not just um, doing business for, for, for money. It went towards doing video for real value. And real value is not just money, you know it, what I mean? It goes beyond money. Yeah, so um, I, I, I'm kind of exposed to a lot of travel. I'm trying to exposed to a lot of meetings. I'm exposed to a lot of engagement. And I'm, most times I'm just the only woman or one or two women there. So uh, you see pictures of myself with in places. and it's just, it's just like, yeah, even if there were women, you can see that they were, they are shy. They're not put in top positions 
or when you see when you're being put in a top position i mean people are wondering who are you who do you think you are so when beyond breaking those biases earlier in life to say like you know what i really can't do this and how do i also encourage other women to come into the sector so i created a wire in 2014 with that um, goal in mind one is to see how i can encourage more women to come into the sector when they see me, young woman, and I'm doing all this, they'll be like, oh, it's quite interesting. Let's just go. It's not just men's sector or mm. men-dominated domin area. And so that was one of the goals, to, to, to encourage women to come into the sector. So also to empower women as well, to understand real estate investment, to understand a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. that are not in the op thrown in the mm. open. So that was one of the uh, goals for that. The second goal was also... Um, um, for us to also look at sustainable development, for su sustainable development, how do we also help achieve this gender inequality gap? Right. So we looked at goal five, which is gender equality, and we girls looked at also using AWARE to empower and encourage a woman and a girl, mm -hmm. a child, to see how they can also be included in the sector in terms of um, you know, being part of that. And most importantly also, the third one is to encourage women to start investing in real estate. Because women are seen like we are the ones that buy all the fancy, fancy things. Or Shoes, when it, bags, when it comes yeah. to investment, yeah. But right now, things it. have changed, you know, you know, from the past five to ten years. You can see a lot of women are in leadership position in real estate. You see a lot of companies now looking at appointing CEOs, women CEOs, and encouraging and pushing people in the sector. So I'm glad that um, these ideas and strategies actually come in place and we can see the milestones and everything. So that, those are the reasons that we also, you know, keep... So someone on. shared a testimony with me on that, by the way. The Already. woman shared and how she's benefited from the African women in real estate. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. So let's quickly talk about... the already... I'm already mm -hmm. trying to like right, right, um, round up. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the conference itself. itself. Okay. Right. So, what are the things to expect? What are the things we should look forward to on the 30th and 31st of May? So, first of all, like I said, being here and having this interview with you, I, I, I wasn't supposed to. So, because <laughs> the communication starts at some point and okay. it's not meant to start now. Okay. But the truth is, um, Prosha has been our partner from day one. They've supported us. So, we also have to be there when they call. So, um, for Real Estate Unite, um, I, I will make most of the announcements at the event. But what is, it is that we've done is, like I said, is we had a goal that, we, that was not definitive when we started. But mm -hmm. as we went on, we now we're able to find out that these are the things we're doing. Mm -hmm. So the last 10 years, like I said earlier, we've been filling gaps, trying to find solutions through all the stuff we've been doing through our advocacy platform. Right. Now, the next 10 years, we're looking to how we can create awareness in climate tech, sustainability, ESG in the sector. Right. So seeing that the construction... I think that's the future. Yeah, so, so seeing that the construction or real estate industry, the built environment as a whole, which includes everything that has yeah. to do with that, you know, contributes to at least 40% when it comes to carbon emission. That's a lot, okay? So it comes from transportation, construction, materials, water, energy use, everything. And it just takes nothing to let people know that all you need is to reduce just 20% of everything you're doing. If your water consumption is just is 40% and you're able to reduce it to 20%. You're already, you know, just one step close to a sustainable building. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? So that education is what we are actually driving in the next 10 years. So that's what Real Estate Unite this year it's conference and everything on. is going to focus. Both the exhibition, the conference, and also the awards as well is going to be more of uh, recognizing people who are now actually passionate about the sustainable culture. Yeah. Right, that's interesting. I love the fact that you mentioned um, education, which mm. we cannot, I don't think we can stop educating Trust. ourselves okay. on anything. And it's quite interesting to see, and we look forward to all of no that. Problem. And um, We look forward to having you at the event. To do more <laughs> yes, very well, yeah. very well, very no well. Thank we'll you so much. You're welcome. welcome yeah. And that will be all for this edition of the Women's Series. I hope you enjoyed this Third, yes, this has to be the third, the third episode on um, real estate. Uh, looking forward to seeing you at the conference as well. Um, if you'd like to reach out to me, send the mail to iomide.ubuntuye at proshare.co. If you'd like to read more on our personal finance, watch our videos, log on to www.proshare.co. 
Follow us on our social media platforms, sharing on the screen. And until next time, thank you for watching.